and then uh, probably go visit my old stomping grounds in Napa and get a burger at uh, the Charter Oak. Shout out to the Charter Oak crew, Tom Ferdinand, Chef Curtis DeFetti, uh, Jan, Big Janssen, Yonald Trump, um, and uh, Chef Costell, of course. Uh, also seeing the, the the opening signs of Yang Bang LA, Chef Cat and Chef John's uh, new project that they're putting together, which is going to be fucking incredible. I mean, I was already in the, in the space, and the space alone is beautiful. And just knowing them and, and having eaten their food, not just tasting menu food, but staff meal food, like... Those two are untouchable. So fuck it. It's like it's like I just watched this interview uh, on Jay Z warning his homie Memphis Bleak. Memphis Bleak was another rapper with him on Rockefeller Records that Fifty Cent was coming, and he was warning them, "Yo, you better you better you know sharpen your game up because once this Fifty Cent character comes out, it's all over." And that's what I feel is going to happen with this Yang Bang LA. I mean, they're going to take over in a big fucking way, so be ready. I saw that they just had a meal at Cato uh, with Bon Juing, uh the photographer, and um, and my homie uh, Rich Wang. So shout out to John Yao. Uh, I'm going to definitely go eat there again. That meal was beautiful, and uh, I'm excited for him too. I haven't read his book, uh, Eight Mistakes We Made For You. I got to check it out. Uh, we didn't even talk about it on the podcast. Uh, to be honest, I didn't ask any questions. He didn't say anything either. So, you know, <laughs> we'll, uh, m- maybe we'll talk about that next time we're on the podcast together. But like I said, love for the industry. All right. Everybody, uh, I know we're getting back into it here. You're short staffed. People are being rude again, right? Uh, the honeymoon phase is like a week after people aren't, aren't uh, able to eat at restaurants. And then after that, they be, they're the same assholes they were when they. They used to come in before. Uh, and, you know, the world is going through a lot of shit right now. So I just hope that we could stay positive and, you know, put one foot in, in front of the other and be able to create positive change. All right. With that, I leave you. Have a good week. Uh, remember to, uh, to shout it out on your social media when you're listening to Sucio Talk. Hashtag Sucio Talk, hashtag Sucio underscore talk, hashtag Sucio Talks. I had to do three of them because people write it all different ways. So I'm going to make sure I cast the net wide. All right. So Kevin Finch, episode 26. Peace. Then my, my promo. All right. I get a little crazy. Welcome to Social Talk. This is David. You guys know that already. Um, I'm sitting here with my main man, Kevin Finch. Chef, what up? What up, what up? Nice to have you. Uh, thanks for uh, inviting me over to your home last night. I uh, got to meet your, your pets, your cat and your dog. Um, tell me about your dog. That was very interesting. Uh, Hank is a, uh, he's like a, a, a purebred uh, Great Pyrenees. And uh, we have some friends that have a farm up in Manila, uh, Utah, in like the middle of nowhere. And uh, they have, uh, they've had a couple different litters of Pyrenees, and they wanted to finally stop it. And they tried to separate the mother and father, but they eventually got together. And so they called me, and they said, do you want a dog? We got a new litter of puppies coming. And uh, oddly enough, Hank was born on my birthday, on January oh. 6th. There you go. Uh, so I'm exactly 31 years older than he is. And uh, instead of paying the fee of three hundred dollars for the dog, I am able to uh, trade two days of chicken harvesting. Okay, what what does that entail? Um, so they have uh, their farm is like mostly uh, uh, produce, but they do have like a dairy cow. Uh, they do ducks, chickens. Uh, they have laying hens. Uh, they also do yaks, and they'll do. I think I think they harvest up one yak a year. Is that like hunted by local hunter? Or no, what? yaks are. Uh, I mean, they're they're domesticated. Well, not domesticated. They're farmed. Um, oh, okay. Wow. Uh, like big hairy cows that can like jump and shit. Like they're they're crazy. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty sick. Whoa. And so they they did like a yak pelt last year, which I still haven't seen, but uh, 
Um, but I was able to eat like some yak ribeye, which was super delicious. It's kind of like gamey cow, like but it still has like a nice amount of fat on it. Yeah, um, it's super tasty stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, and then they do pigs as well. But anyways, yeah, so they got these dogs, and uh, I really wanted one. I really wanted like a Shih Tzu, but my wife won't let me because it's too small. And it's not like an adventure <laughs> dog, so we got the biggest dog we could find. Yeah, um, she's like, I want the pickup truck of dogs. Yeah, yeah. So like, this guy's a monster. Like, yeah. He's, he's, Three and a half months old, and he weighs forty pounds. Oh my god! Yeah. How big is he projected to get? Uh, I mean, it's like a mystery. Like you never really know. It just depends on like when you clip him and like uh, like how you feed him and stuff. But I mean, his older brother was like one hundred fifty pounds. He's a year old. What? But his mom and his dad were both under one hundred pounds. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, ideally, like if he's under one hundred pounds, like that'd be kind of nice. But if he's over, it'd be pretty sick too. Yeah, so, you know, we'll for see. sure. Yeah, awesome. Well, you got something to look forward to. So, for those of you who don't know. Uh, Chef Finch was the last thing you did was what Ensu? Um, yeah, the last restaurant that I worked in was uh, was Ensu. Yeah, Shenzhen in China. But most notably was the CDC of uh, Atelier Crin. Yeah, for a very, for a very long time, right? Yeah, I was there for uh, just about three years. Yeah. I was the chef of cuisine for about two years, uh, and. Um, it was a lot of fun. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, that's fairly recently, and you know, in Sucio Talk, we're going to take you all the way back, son. So, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah. Born, raised? Born and raised. All right. Uh, I yep. recently found out the name of the city that my parents, like, they had, like, this shitty little house in, like, this white ghetto. It was called White City. Okay. Because the guy that had it, his name was, like, something white. And so he named his, like, complex White City. And so that's where I was conceived. Huh. Okay. Um, white City. White City. Love that. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I grew up in Salt Lake City, Utah. I went to uh, uh, Catholic school. Uh huh. Um, and uh, I went to Catholic school from second through eighth grade. And uh, was it a big influence, you know, um, religiously in your I family, like, or was it just like yeah, the thing like to my, do? My so like my 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 mom's side of the family is all Catholic. They're all pretty religious. Um, my my dad is uh, uh, he's supportive. Um, I guess, um, but you know, it's like the, it's a good education. The education in Salt Lake City is for public school systems is I think a little less than like a lot of states. It's not, it's not really all that great. And like I guess we can get into that in like a little bit. But going to Catholic school was, um, I mean, like I was an altar boy. I sang in the choir. Um, you know, I mean, it all sounds like I was a model student, but I wasn't. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I was like trying to be involved. I was in the Boy Scouts. Um, you know, I played sports and stuff. And, gotcha. What kind of sports? Um, well, before I stopped growing, I thought I was going to be huge, so I played basketball. <laughs> and you're like, I'm going to make it. Yeah, I'm going to make it. Yeah. And I just started growing wider, you know, I think yeah. the same height. Did you have that thing where you were, like, taller than everybody in third grade, and you were like, this is it, baby? Yeah, it was like it was like <laughs> sixth grade, I was, like, still the fat kid. Yeah. And in seventh grade, I was I could just beat everybody up. Yeah. And then eighth grade, people started to catch up, but I was still a little bigger. And then by ninth grade, I was, like, the little fat guy again. And yeah. Like, oh, man. You're like, fuck. Yeah. All right. Well... <laughs> Um, and then how was, uh, how was the eating in your household? Was it like going um, out to eat or was it very like mom cooks dinner? You know? Uh, so like at a young age, my dad was a, a financial planner, um, and he was working out of Boston. So he was home like one, two weekends a month. Okay. Um, and this was at a young age. This wasn't my whole childhood, uh, by any means. But so my mom would cook a lot. Uh, we ate out when it was like easy for her, but I, I remember mostly eating her food and uh, I was like a super picky eater. Yeah. Like I fucking hated spaghetti and meatballs. I hated like anything, man, and like, but now like spaghetti and anything is my favorite. Yeah, like, meatballs are my like, favorite sandwich. Like it's crazy, and like there's not a lot of things I say no to these days. You know? Yeah, I, mean, I, I think I have a pretty a pretty good palate, and like I like eating a lot of food. Yeah, did how did when did that start growing in you? Was that later? Or? Uh, yeah, way later. Because when okay. I was 12 years old, I convinced myself that I needed to be a vegetarian. Like I did it on my own. Why? I don't know. Were you watching documentaries? Or? Well, we were in health class, and we learned that you could be healthy without eating, eating meat. And I think I just wanted to be different. Yeah. And like, what'd your dad have to say about that? I, well, my dad was <laughs> vegetarian for a little bit in, okay. in college, so he was supportive. And uh, my mom hated it because she had to like cook extra stuff. Yeah, time, exactly. You know? And like, I get it, you know. Yeah, for sure. But I did it from like twelve to like eighteen, nineteen. Yeah. And uh, I was working for this guy, and he's like, "Dude, if you ever want to be a chef, you got to eat meat. Otherwise, you'd be a vegetarian chef." Yeah. And, uh, and then the doctors were like, do you feel like an old person? Because you're iron deficient. And uh, you need to start eating some like, red meat. What like, age was this at? I was like 18 years old. And they were like, yo, you're deficient. You were a vegetarian from 13 to 18? The 12 to 18, yeah. What? Yeah. And what was you eating? I was just stubborn. I mean, there was like really no reason behind it. Yeah. What were you eating? 
uh, I mean, at the beginning when I lived at home, it was great because my dad would like really put forward an effort to uh, to make me like good vegetarian food, like lots of vegetables and stuff. And I definitely ate like more tofu than I think I would have liked. I, I don't really fuck with tofu yeah, anymore. I hear you. Um, I mean, occasionally I'll get like some you know some good tofu dishes. Yeah. Uh, and then like when I moved out, because I moved out the second I turned eighteen, the day I turned eighteen, I was gone. Uh, then it was like mac and cheese and like Oreos and fucking yeah. you know, all the junk food that doesn't have meat in it that I can eat. And When you moved out at 18, did you have a plan as to what you wanted to do? Um, so I, I graduated high school early because I hopped around a few different schools. So I had a lot of extra credits. Okay. Um, and so I graduated early uh, and I moved to Park City, which is like 45 minutes uh, east of Salt Lake. It's like a little ski town. Um, this recently blown up a lot since then. I mean, then it was like a pretty big ski town as well. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I was like, I want to be like a pro snowboarder. And I, mind you, I was never that good, but I was ambitious. And uh, so I was snowboarding and like cooking at a ski resort. And I had been cooking in high school for a couple years prior. So yeah. It was like, this is like what I, I know I can do as a job like, without going to college. And um, I didn't want to go to college. I got into a couple good schools, but just wasn't my thing. Yeah. I was scared of the tuition. I was scared of, you know, not going to class and failing and wasting all of my money or my parents' money and, like, just, like, all that time that I would have wasted. Um, and uh, so I moved out early in January of 2007 uh, when I turned 18. I graduated high school early, and then I moved to Park City, uh, started working at the ski resorts, and uh, uh, and then I just kind of started traveling from there. I went yeah. back and did one more summer in Salt Lake, and then that was it. And then I did Park City, or I would travel. I go to like Nantucket Island, and I'd work at a restaurant out there. And then I did a summer on San Juan Island in Washington, in uh-huh. Puget Sound. Yeah. Um, How did you get all these jobs? Like, what was the first job? Uh, first job was a ski resort, and I just like went up and applied. Got you. Um, what was that culture like up there? Was uh, it like a learning chef culture, or was it like let's have fun? It was like it was like, dude, there's gonna be like four thousand people coming in here today to get slices of pizza. Are you ready? And I'd be like hungover. And, like, not wearing a sock, and it was fucking yeah. terrible, you know? <laughs> so, and it was just, like, you were there to snowboard. So, like, yeah. you, get like a, you get, like, a pass, you get a, you get a ride break. Yeah. And, uh, and like, it was just, like, they're, like, do you know how to do this? And you're, like, yeah, of course I do, but you don't. And, like, you figure it out. And yeah. Like, it was just a mess. And, I mean, everything was coming out of bags. Yeah. You know? Like, that's most certainly not on my resume, right? Like, cooking, sure. cooking like, frozen bag foods and stuff. Um, but, uh... But yeah, I mean, like, but even before that, I did an apprenticeship when I was like fifteen, because mm-hmm. um, like I thought I wanted to be a chef at a young age, but I didn't know why, and I wasn't really in love with it. I just thought it'd be a cool career. Yeah. Um, so I, I had like a little bit of knowledge, and like you know, I knew how to do all the grunt work, like peel garlic, and yeah, you know, I knew how to make emulsions and stuff. So, okay, yeah. very cool. And then uh, where'd you go from there? After um, the ski resort. So, so you around a lot. So was there some kind of program where you saw these jobs? Or was it like, I want to go there, this is a resort, I'm going to go? Um, no, so like recruiters would come uh, during your winter season or your summer season, and they would recruit for, you know, coming to the islands in Nantucket or going to the island in, uh, in like, Washington and stuff. And um, at the time, my girlfriend was on a visa, so okay. she had to travel gotcha. uh, to stay in the country. And so we just started bouncing around. Um, I guess first I did San Diego. Uh, and that one was with no recruiters. We just went out to San Diego. I lived there for like eight, nine months. Um, I worked at the restaurant next to George's. So I'm like a step down from, from Chef Costel. Uh, they wouldn't hire me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and Shame on them. I know, I know. That was a lot of fun. Uh, I got surfed a lot and skateboarded and stuff. And then, um, and then I, did, I did Nantucket Island, four summers in Nantucket Island. And those were nine-month seasons. Uh, and that was a ton of fun. I definitely learned a lot and grew there. I made sous chef when I was like 22. Okay. Uh, which is like too young to be a sous chef. Yeah. Uh, but I was like, yeah, I'm a chef now. And I took it. But, uh, uh, but I, and, uh, we would do like, you know, massive brunches and like we would do like four or 500 covers for dinner and stuff. Wow. Um, but, but mostly it was like a lifestyle. Like most of the people that worked for us were, were CIA kids coming on their externships. Okay. But they weren't really coming out to learn. They were coming out to party. They want to like be on Nantucket. They want to like drive their Jeeps on the beach and go drink and stuff. So it was mostly like a lifestyle thing, but like you were still cooking. Yeah. Um, That's usually how it ends up. You yeah. fall in love with the lifestyle first. Yeah. And then you sort of like... It all kind of just fell into place. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. And um, when do you... Uh, when do you kind of decide, like, I'm going to take this more seriously? Um, so I did a winter 
in Nevis Island, St. Kitts and Nevis in the Caribbean, the oh. West Indies. Um, and I went down there as like a consultant head chef position um, through like a friend of the hotel. They had like a friend that had a family that had this. 